So uh, the headquarters is obviously out here in San Jose, but from Cadence as a perspective, as a worldwide company, right. we have a bunch of development offices all over the world. And um, the office outside of Boston that I reside in is where Allegro was developed. So I, I cut my teeth on Allegro for a lot of years, moved into the SI space, and uh, so it's a pretty exciting time for us, having just acquired Sigurdi and whatnot uh, for, the, for the layout side of things. So Allegro is version 17.2 right now. When I started with uh, what was Valid at the time, what it, was it, called? it was called Valid, Valid Logic Systems. Valid Logic? Yes, and I think Valid had probably bought Telesis but I started on Allegro 4.1.2, oh. so it's a great release. <laughs> it's funny you should ask about where we are lately with SI tools with related to Allegro's because it's basically what I've done my entire career. So I started when I started with Allegro, I started help develop the constraint management system, and the SI tools. SI was still pretty, not quite as popular or as necessary as it is today. But we feel very strongly in tightly integrated tools between layout and analysis. And we realize that SI designers would always want to use their core set of tools, but there's always a communication and a collaboration issue where the person that needs to fix the design is in layout. So we've been providing tools that not only allow you to better communicate with your SI or PI experts, we've also been providing better tools that you can run right within the layout. Some of these tools won't even require SI models, but they give you the same electrical quality that you would get from any SI analysis. We've been integrating Sigurdi engines underneath the hood. And the other thing that we see in this area that's gonna be more important is even if it comes down to some type of electrical check, those electrical checks are eventually gonna to have to be power aware. Some level of integration of SI tools into layout has become a necessity. You can always have separate disciplines. Mm -hmm. You can have your double E's just do the schematic, you can have a dedicated layout person, and you can have your exper experts for analysis. No matter what, there has to be some level of communication between them. So we've, we've developed integration to the point where, say the, the expert runs the analysis, that report can be invoked from the layout tool. Now they can cross probe to where the violations are. We've even got it to the point where you can point to the setup environment that the export ran and then rerun the analysis as many times as you want. It kind of shortens that fix, analyze, fix, cycle, and just makes it better. Yes, we do. We have, um, we have new thermal simul simulation capabilities that will be coming out, but we have thermal co-simulation with our um, power integrity tools. It's, that's actually a great question. Um, so if, you, if you're looking for how our tools relate to other tools in the industry, um, the paper I gave yesterday um, was about how designers could do better with things like impedance coupling and uh, return path. And I gave recommendations on what to do. The fact of the matter is, is that there's a lot of other competent EDA tools out in the marketplace. Um, some of these other tools though tend to focus on uh, more of like a point tool operation. So. And again, they're all capable. We have them as well. We have people that run our tools as point tools with other layout systems. Um, the difference is, is that I, I believe we bring a better level of integration to the market for your team. Your team will have better collaboration. And if you've got a layout um, team that wants to do more, uh, wants to do more than just connecting traces, wants to be part of the ability to analyze and fix the design, we provide you those capabilities. Some of the other things that we've been seeing in the industry, we see more double E's that are responsible for schematic and layout. Why should these people have to learn additional analysis tools? They've already learned two different environments. And they probably have dedicated SI or PI experts that they can call upon, but we find that they would much rather do some of the lower level or first order SI checks right within the layout tool. And those are the capabilities we provide. When you look at traditional PCB technology like that, like you said, which is more of a, a subtractive, um, I, I believe the additive was much more popular in the IC space. We're already starting to see some of that bleed into the packaging space. Um, you know, just recently I was asked to look at a design. Yes, I'm asked to look at a design and 
they were having issues translating that package design to the analysis tools. And, you know, I'm trying to look at both sides and it's like, I, I literally had to go and say, what is going, and they they're basically said, we're trying something new here. I, it'll eventually, every, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be part of the uh, natural evolution, I believe. No, we don't have anything currently that would do any type of additive. I think what had happened is if you look at the Allegro tools in general, um, they're very flexible. Um, uh, think of it as certain cell phone technologies. One type of cell phone gives you one way to do everything, and the other common technology is a little bit more flexible. Um, we like to think of Allegro being in that latter camp. Um, you know, I, I remember someone quite famously saying to me uh, years ago, when someone calls and says, how do you do this? It's not like, oh, well, the tool was never designed to do that. It's like, well, let us take a look. We've, there's got to be a way we could do this. So even getting back to your, your, your new technology question, they were still able to do something, call it a workaround. I won't quite call it a hack, but they were able to do something in the, in the packaging tools to um, do that um, additive process. Oh, if you were getting down to the dimensions where traces are at a mill or vias are at that kind of size, um, from a design perspective, I'm not sure there would be anything that's really different. Um, from an analysis tools perspective, I could tell you you'd probably want to go to full wave, maybe even 3D full wave type of technology, but, but very confident we have those capabilities to analyze that kind of stuff. I, I, I feel like I've, this week I've been saying it a lot. A lot of things just come down to trace geometries and material properties. And a lot of what you're going to do and make your life easier is if, if I'm designing a layout just for artwork purposes or just to do something for manufacturing, I just need to know what layers are what, you know, and just send it out. But if I'm going to do any type of analysis later on downstream, I want to make sure that my stack up has the right dimensions, has the right material properties. I mean, like for artwork, no one cares what your thickness of your dielectric or what the material was, but for any type of analysis, you better have that correct. So as far as high-speed materials go, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because uh, since the acquisition of Sigwity, um, we've, we've just recently moved to a common materials file database that's used between two. And um, in the Sigwity environment, you're, you're going to translate from the CAD system. If you look at any Sigwity workflow, the first thing it's going to tell you to do is go check your stack up. You know, you know it's CYA step, if you will. Um, but sometimes what the translator will do is look for the best match. And then it's up to you or your responsibility to go ahead and figure out, oh, that wasn't really what I want, or to make sure that the material properties are correct. Um, so now we actually share a common materials database between the two tools, the two environments. Well, we feel very strongly in, in, in using the right materials and, and being able to model and give the user access to the type of materials that they're using. So if a user wanted okay. to integrate their own materials, um, Alleg the Allegro format was not all that flexible. Mm -hmm. The new format is all XML based. So, so it would be much easier to get, to transfer yes, information. yep. And then the other good thing about with the new material file format is you can, you can migrate your old file formats in Allegro to the new format very easily. It's a uh, kind of like a merging process, so you're not losing anything. I, I can tell you it's gotten better. I'm only laughing because I've been with Allegro or with Cadence for so long. Um, you know, you have a major release that comes out and, you know, having a design database, you have to make changes to support either new technology, new functionality, new features. Um, but I know in the past it used to be generate manufacturing file formats, read in a new let, net list and try to get this thing all synced up together again. But we do do we have done better in, in recent years with putting more down rev capabilities. Now those down rev capabilities will sometimes strip out features or functionality, but we warn you what that is. But it, it was a painful lesson for us to learn over the years, but yeah, we do have, we do have better down rev capabilities now. I might not be the best one to answer about ODB++ or, or IPC 2581. Mm -hmm. I hope I got the number right. Um, but we believe in standards. We don't believe or like to have one vendor control such an important uh, thing. I think the standard itself has, has taken off. It's got a lot of good members in the, the consortium. And we have very big plans in terms of what we can do, not only in the Allegro side, 
but with the analysis side. So we have some very new, exciting things that I, I can't quite disclose right now, but that'll be happening in the SI space. Simple things I can talk about, like doing better imports into the SIGRT environment, but then be able to migrate data other, into other parts of the system based on that. The design databases that are neutral, I mean, Cadence has been doing that on the IC side of things for a number of years with, with open access, right? Um, we, we strongly feel that we can, we can get some of the same advantages with IPC 2581. Yes, very much so. I think the, the future is very bright for IPC 2581. Let me just say from the internal activity I see, uh, and not only in the analysis tools, making sure we can support translating from that format into our analysis tools, I can tell you we're, we're heavily invested and we wouldn't be heavily invested if we didn't see that there wasn't a future there. All right, so if we're talking about standards and, and, and interface standards in particular, whether they're DDR4 or whatever, you know, we've had some initiatives in the past on interface-based design. Um, at the current time, they're more suited to the front-end environment or the logic environment where you can better manage those interfaces. Um, I know we have um, an extensive suite of uh, compliance kits from major interfaces for the analysis side of things in, in the SIGRT applications. I think there might be a little bit of a void, if you will, in, in, in within Allegro, but or from the layout applications. But we seem to have it covered from a front end. We'll probably doing be doing some things in the future from a constraint perspective around those, though. Well, one of the things I can talk about, not to say I have my own crystal ball about, about a roadmap of, um, in terms of where we're headed. Um, one thing I see is that there's a lot of move with a lot of EDA companies to do concurrent design. And that concurrent design seems to be focused just at the layout level, taking as many layout people as you can, working on a design concurrently. We see a tremendous opportunity there to maybe plug in analysis to that as well. Why would someone want to be working on a design that's rapidly changing and then have to take off a static version of that design and send it someone to be send it to someone else to be analyzed by the time the data comes back and someone wants to take a look at it or fix it the design's way ahead of where it would have been if just one person was working on it so something that we see that there's a potential to do in the future is for the SI or the PI expert to be able to plug into that concurrent design Someone, maybe the layout designer, generated some type of report, coupling, whatever, and, and had a question. Well, why wait to get an answer? Have them plug into the session and show them, and then they can query things on the board. Or an SIPI expert could jump in, lock down a section, do some analysis. Now that collaboration issue of getting the data that needs to be fixed to someone else can almost happen in real time. Bye. Concurrent design from an internal or, or, or product feature name and within, as far as the Legos, it's called Symphony. We've always felt very strongly about the, the entire design flow, how the players in that flow are able to communicate with one another, share design data, get their designs out quicker, et cetera.